Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the Unreasonable Odds podcast. It is Thursday, April 15th. Uh, I'm your host, Julian Edlow, and we have a guest on the show once again today, Liv Moods, the director of media and in-app host for Book It HQ, the host of Prop, T- uh, Prop Talk, and you might know that she is the player prop TikTok chick, as it says right in her bio. Um, a nice little combination of TikTok and player props. Why is she on the show today? Obviously, because I am a huge NBA player prop guy. So this is perfect. Liv, welcome to the Unreasonable Odds podcast. Thanks so much for having me. I feel honored. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, so before we get into NBA talk, whether it be for tonight's four game slate, just kind of NBA talk in general, we are going to debut a, a new segment here. Um, you're going to be like our test subject. I told you so good luck. I'll do it along with you since we haven't done it before. Um, so know me better is going to be the name of this segment with our first guest live moods. We're just going to fire off some quick questions, um, about kind of your experiences betting and, uh, whatever comes to the top of your head first, you fire it away and I'll, I'll do it along with you. So here we go. Know me better. Your, without saying the amount, just your biggest win or most memorable win in, in the betting space. Most memorable win would probably be, oh, that's hard. Um, I think it's most memorable because it was an under and it was a James Harden under, but under 11 and a half assists for James Harden was pretty epic because I was nervous. The capping was there and it smashed. So that was really awesome. There you go. Harden unders are always a little bit sweaty. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess my Biggest win dollar amount was the Patriots Super Bowl win over the Rams. That was a nice one. Um, my favorite win, because I always use this one as like a claim to fame, was Steve Pierce at plus 3,000 to win MVP of the 2018 World Series. Wow. Um, yeah, I don't, I just kind of stumbled upon that one. Um, so that was awesome. And I brag about it all the time to everybody on this podcast. So they all know that I bet that. You should um, brag about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, and another reason I brag about it is because I have plenty of these in our next question, your worst beat. Well, this one is recent and this one hurt pretty bad. I had a same game parlay and the last leg was Jordan Poole to score 20 plus points and he missed it by one. He missed some free throws at the end and he scored 19 to end the game. And it just was one of those that you just don't forget because when you're this close, it's like the most painful thing ever. Not only missing it that close, but missed free throws at the end of a game for player prop points are, are not good. Um, no. <laughs> and I know that you, cause I see you tweet about this a lot and they get me, but we'll talk about it later. The blowouts for player props. Uh, those stink. Those yeah. can lead to some bad beats. My worst beat is not even it's not even like an in-game beat. It is like a bad beat of life. Uh, right before COVID hit, I had been riding Kansas to be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament at plus 250. When the week of the tournament, when the bracket was about to come out, Kansas was minus 2000 to be a one seed. But COVID hit, we never got that bracket. So that bet that was an automatic lock just voided, got my money back, got nothing out of it. Voiding sometimes feels worse than losing, honestly. <laughs> it was it was one. Kansas was going to be the top overall seed in the 2019 oh. tournament, and uh, I had nothing to show for it thanks to, to COVID. Um, <laughs> COVID ruins everything, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Here's one that I, I, I'll have a hard time pinning an answer down because it has happened so many times. The worst advice you've ever given. Uh, that would, that's a very easy one for me. I used to be very loud and proud about life's too short to bet the under. And I'm realizing that there's actually profit betting the under. Sometimes you just have to look for it and it may be sweaty and it may be nerve wracking, but as much as I hate betting the under, there is value there sometimes. So that would be probably my worst advice I've given. Here's the thing. If you're new to betting, people love to bet overs because it's always alive. You can always hold out hope that, okay, maybe he'll get three more assists in the last two minutes of this game. Maybe with an under it, it it's never done. It's, it dead, it's until, dead. It's done. <laughs> it goes, well, it goes until the right. You can lose it with eight, with eight minutes left in the game. So 
that's why people are afraid of unders. Um, the worst advice I've ever given, I don't, it's, I've, I've been doing this for like six years. I've given out way too much bad advice. Um, but I would say I just kept, I stuck to my guns that uh, those 2019 Warriors, when Durant got hurt, I kept saying, he'll be back. He'll be fine. Bet the Warriors to win it. Bet the Warriors to win it. Bet the Warriors to win it every day. Um, all the way up until he came back and, and tore his Achilles and the Raptors obviously dominated that series. And uh, yeah, that didn't go well for me. <laughs> um the team that you've lost the most on or the team that you doesn't have to be the amount of money, the team that you lose the most on and just keep going back to. Oh, that's interesting. Um, Oh, the nuggets. Okay. And you are, you're a Denver girl. So I am. And you know what? Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've screwed me over way too many times. So I would definitely have to say the nuggets. Um, So I'm in Boston. I'm a Celtics fan. I can see that. I love it. There, Yeah, yeah, stuff's everywhere. Uh, (laughs) The Celtics are actually somewhat hot right now. They got a huge win in Denver, uh, that 31-3 to run the other day. Um, But they have been a mess of a team this year. I've lost some money on them in weird spots. But I'll just go to a recent one. I I faded UCLA pretty much every game of that tournament. And game after game after game, they just kept – looking better and better. And, uh, that was, that was costly. Uh, a team that you win the most on. I would say the nets this year, the nets, the nets this year, uh, for sure. They've, I mean, James Harden over props besides my one awesome under cash, his props for overs are pretty much solid for the most part. Um, so I would say the nets collectively have definitely made me the most money this year or the Hornets. Actually, I, the Hornets Sorry, have been a very, great, they've been a very exciting underdog. team to bet on this year because you know, they're, they've got a lot of great guys and yeah. So I would say the Hornets are the Nets. There you go. Um, I'll go back. And again, I don't try and back hometown teams too much, but just the best streak ever was, and it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the Patriots win total overs when they had Tom Brady Every year it's 10 and a half, 11, whatever. And they would go over. I would just blindly bet the Patriots win total every single year and it would cash until last year, which was a little bit different for obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Here's an interesting one. A team that you never bet. And I don't know. I'm going to ask this one, but I don't know if there, I don't know if there's such thing as a team that you never bet. There's always got to be a number that can entice you on something. I was actually just looking at this the other day. I was looking, we had a pretty, we had a pretty big hefty slate of NBA games yesterday. And I was actually thinking about it. I rarely, rarely, rarely bet on the Raptors and I rarely bet on the Cavs. Uh, Those are two teams that I realized I don't bet on hardly at all. Um, For the most part, like you said, there's always a number that entices you, but Um, we can kind of get into this when you talk about how I do my prop betting, but I look at very specific things and those two teams kind of fall in the middle and don't really offer a ton of edge for me. So I rarely bet those two teams or the bulls, I would say is another one. Those are three teams that I just kind of stay away from for whatever reason. So I will say I bet against the Raptors last night because the Raptors stink. I took the Spurs. Everybody was out for the Raptors. So of course the Raptors won the game and I lost. So I'm bitter towards the Raptors right now myself, but we had some, we had a lot of users on the book it app that were riding the Spurs with you. And they were, they were upset to say the least. <laughs> Not good. Um, a team that I never bet. This is an easy one. There's probably one team that I, I legitimately never bet right now. The New York jets. I don't bet on the Jets. <laughs> they smart, smart man they are not good at football, so I don't bet. Easy, Very smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, last one here: a trend that you love to follow. I would say my go-to is kind of performance in the last five. For whatever reason, the last five for me is kind of what I base it off of. Um, for a lot of my betting, whether it's spreads, totals, whatever, because uh, the last five can kind of give you an idea of who's been out, um, what's their rotation look like. Uh, so last five games is kind of what I typically look at. But 
the trends are always changing. Uh, so you kind of just got to be on your toes in this, industry, but that's kind of my go-to one for just about every sport. So for me and people that, you know, listen to this podcast, follow the work on DraftKings know this, but for me, it's either like first quarter or first half trends in the NBA. Um, just because I think it fails to account for two things. Like if you have a number, a spread is 10. The first half spread is going to be five. They just, they, they cut it in half. Makes sense, but it doesn't account for, you know, do you have a fast starting team against a slow starting team? Teams play different rotations matter. Um, so I love when you have, I'm just pulling numbers out of a hat, but like you have a team that's 20 and seven against the first half spread at home against a team that's eight and 15 against the first half spread on the road. And you have them meeting up. I follow that trend every time. And when it misses, it misses, but it, I just feel like the num there's value in that number because they odds makers feel like they have to take that number and cut it in half. If it's for a quarter, you cut it in, in, into a quarter, but it doesn't always account for how teams come out of the gates. So true. Well, and especially teams, NBA has been so bizarre because you see teams just like if the team is down at halftime, it's too early to sweat. It really is because it, the, it has been so weird to see these teams come back and the blowout games. I mean, it's just been crazy. The NBA has been crazy this year. I mean, you look at, for example, last night, the Nets are getting mopped by the Sixers and then they decided to just sit Kyrie Irving late and the Nets bet and makes a comeback in Philly. Like, Go figure. The NBA is hard to predict this year. But speaking of the NBA being hard to predict, uh, you know, betting spreads and whatnot is uh, is the most popular way pretty much to bet any sport, I would say. But something that I noticed you do a lot that I do a lot is betting NBA player props. Yes, I think. And I know that you agree with this is it's a better way to get an edge on an NBA game. Um, people pay less attention to it, uh, which can also help get you an edge on it. You can work matchups into it. You can work, you know, if there's an injury that moves a spread two points or whatever, that injury is going to create a lot more value in the player prop market than a spread moving, moving a couple of points. So I just want to pick your, your brain. What is, what is your process when you, when you get going to, you know, start a day in terms of, of betting an NBA player prop? Yeah. So, well, first things first, I think it's important for me to say that I have a lot of people that reach out to me and say like 9 AM, 10 AM. They're like, what are the locks for today? I, I typically wait, which is hard for me because I'm not patient and I want to find out what the props are and get in there and get after it. But I think it's important to wait because if you follow fantasy labs, NBA, or if you follow any website that like tells you what the injuries are like, if they're questionable, if you probably follow the DK live app. Oh, do you guys have, do you guys we have player? It. We do it. Oh okay. yeah. We, we, we sit at the desk all day watching the NBA, uh, NBA lineup news. I, I do it a few days a week. Oh um, my gosh. That's awesome. It's, oh, it's, it's, it, it is awesome, but it's absolutely horrible this year because everybody's out all the time. Right. Right. Yeah. No, well, I'll be, I'll be sure to check that out. I will actually there look into go. that because I'm always looking for something to just like notify me because as you know, it's changing. If I were to bet something right now, that line would probably move against me four different times in the next four hours. So with these injuries that we've seen just like one after the other, and then not only that, but the COVID situation as well, because it's not like an injury where it's like, Oh, he's questionable day to day. And then, you know, like, oh, they're probably going to play. If it's COVID-19, they're out. And that's that. It's not like, oh, they could potentially, it's like protocol has to be followed. They're not playing. So I typically wait um, as close as I can to game time when you kind of know exactly who's not going to be playing, um, what the injuries are for that game, all that good stuff. Like I had a bet bright and early. I already knew exactly what it was. It was one of my juice plays for the Timberwolves Nets game. And that was before it got postponed. So that is another example of just, you never know what you're going to get. So kind of waiting, but I definitely look, like I said earlier, I look at the last five matchups of this team and of this player specifically, like what, how has this player performed? Uh, a good example of that would be, you know, like a Dennis Schroeder, for example, when AD was out, he didn't just get into that 
you know, that shooter mode right away and really put up points. It took him time to progress there. So that last five matchup is a really good way for me to see like, okay, he's progressively getting hotter and hotter each game. So, you know, as that line starts to move, I may want to look at that over. I also take a look at the top five defensive teams and the worst five defensive teams, because I think that definitely makes a huge difference. If, you know, if, if let's say James Harden is going up against the Knicks who allow the least amount of points in the league, you know, I'm, I may look at his under on points and his over on assists because I know he's going to be more of a facilitator and less of a shooter. So things like that, I think defense is everything. I've said this since I was a little girl, defense wins championships. I still believe that. Um, so defense is huge for me when I'm looking at player props because, even the best players can be stopped. Uh, but like you said, I mean, the player props are fun because another great example, Steph Curry the other night, the best bet you could have made was knowing that he had, he was trying to break a record against Wilt Chamberlain. His over on points is was an easy cash because we knew he's going to show off tonight. So, you know, things like that, just kind of, when it's a player versus a team, you can consider those things. You know, I always like to look at revenge games. If a player you know, left one team and is now playing against that team, you know, they're probably going to try to show off a little. So there's a little bit of opinion in there of like, this is what I think is going to happen. But a lot of it too, is just defense and looking at their stats against that given team, how they play on the road, things like that. Those last points that you made at DraftKings, we call that narrative street, whether you're going to, whether you're trying to break a record or go up against a former team, we say you're taking a stroll down narrative street. And this I love that going to go off for that certain reason. Yeah, um, I love that. That remind me, I should have used this in one of, in one of my best wins. Uh, I think I took Kobe Bryant his last game ever in the NBA. I think his points he was he was banged up. He was old in his career. I think his points were like juiced up to twenty four and a half. He was averaging significantly less. I just bit the bullet, took the over. He scored sixty. That was a good win. Um, go. <laughs> There so there's go. a, there's an example of a, a trip down narrative street. Yeah. I love so, that. I completely agree with you and get asked the same questions and want to stress to people that you need to, especially this season out of any season, wait to bet player props. Just like you need to wait to bet a spread because you have just the bucks on whatever day it was Sunday, just, you know, Giannis was going to be out. He's been questionable a bunch of games anyway, but then just Middleton, Holiday, Lopez, DiVincenzo. That's the starting five. They just go, whatever, rest, load management, injury management, whatever you want to call it, all out. And then it's the Bucks bench that loses by 20. Um, great if you can bet the spread in time uh, and, and get a good number on, on whoever they're playing against winning the game. But terrible if you lock something in on the bucks earlier right. in the day or bet i mean if you bet anything on the player props there you're probably just getting voided unless you for some reason had an epiphany and bet like a bench players over early in the day and then you're looking great but the news has to come in before you before you fire on anything and i couldn't agree more on that one of the ways that i bet player props and people don't always love this but it's the most profitable way to do it is to fire on them when you get the injury news like you were saying you want to pay attention for yep. the injury news and that's something we do at DraftKings and information that we tweet out at DraftKings when that information hits you're gonna have like two minutes three minutes before that stuff is getting yanked down and uh and kind of reassessed there's nothing so, worse than refreshing your DraftKings app or the browser and seeing that your game is locked and you're like, oh, yes. <laughs> and it's always, it always happens to me where I was looking at a prop and I was like, Oh, I don't know. And then the injury report comes out and then the game gets locked and the value that I wanted it at was better than it ends up being with the injury. So it's, it's tough. I mean, you just have to be patient, honestly, but when the games get locked, you know, something is changing and DraftKings slash Vegas is trying to quickly figure out how they can stay on the right side and, you know, make money on both sides. But yeah, it's the injury. I would say what you said is perfect. Waiting for the injuries is crucial because you may bet a player that doesn't even play, you know, so you yeah. just got to, I would say, yeah, waiting for the injury reports, huge. Um, yeah. And that's, so one of the things that I, 
like about what you do is, and I'm scrolling through right now, congrats, 4-0 yesterday on Wednesday. Good work. Thank you. Yeah, that was um, a good time. I was, a, I was sweating it out, but it was a good one for sure. That, at 4-0 is always a good day. <laughs> you yeah, can't exactly. About that. Um, so yeah, like I, I respect that you break down those matchups and just kind of trust your process and, and go with it. Yeah. I don't even play that many, like, let's call them like straight up player props, like at the number that they close, I have to be really confident in a matchup or it has to be something like you just talked about a Steph Curry going for a record. Like, okay, he's going to get shots up tonight. Yeah. It has to be something I'm super confident in. And I only play, you know, maybe a couple of those a week. The majority of what I do, I just rack up cheap wins because wins are wins. So like I was just they saying, you know, yes, they are. And that's one thing, you know, I've learned, I've only been in this, I've been in this industry under a year. So it's yeah. still very new to me, which is why I so appreciate podcasts like this. Cause I learn something new in this industry every single day. I'm here to tell you, I learn something new every day, which I love. Um, but that's one thing, you know, God, people on Twitter are like, Oh, like you only laid $5. You only laid $10. Like I still walked away with money. I don't know what the problem is. Like, yeah. unless you send me a cash app and give me more money to place on this bed, the $5 is going to have to be good enough because, you know, I mean, that's why we have units, you know, you've got to, I was just going to say, that's nobody's know. problem. That's nobody's business. If you make $5 on it, if somebody wants to bet it and you give them a winner and their unit is a thousand dollars, then you right. just made them a thousand dollars. And that's cr- And that's what's thankful. crazy. Like a night, like last night, you know, I didn't uh, go, God, I did not parlay those bets together because I know how player props work and it'll be the last free. It'll be the Russell Westbrook play of the night where he ends. I was seriously sweating it out. I was like on my hands and knees. He had 14 rebounds, 10 assists and I needed him over 24 and a half rebounds plus assists. So he was one shy. And I'm like, this would be, cause I thought about parlaying them together for a split second. And then I said, leave it to Russell Westbrook to be one shy. And that would have blown my parlay, but people will send me screenshots when they tail me and they like put them in a parlay and lay a hundred on them. And I'm like, I love that you have that much confidence in me, but some days I don't even have that much confidence in me. So I don't know where the, like the confidence comes from, but yeah, I mean, units are important and I'm, I try to stay away from the parlay world because it always just makes me really, really sad, really sad. Yeah. I know what you mean. People love, people love parlays. They like to get the big payout. And I got the same, the same exact thing that you were just talking about. I wrote an article a couple of days ago this week. It went two and oh, Somebody sent me a screenshot that they took both of those plays, added their favorite play and parlayed them and won. I was like, great. Good for you. I know. Um, but it's yeah, I, like, for them, but it's like, then the pressure's on when they're like DMing you going, I really need Russ tonight. Like I threw him in a parlay with all of your props. I'm like, why would you do that? I did not tell you to do that. <laughs> nope. That's it's very clear unless you write this is a parlay unless you tweet this is a parlay those are individual plays so yep. very important yep um and i will say like you're saying you're you're new in the space you like to do podcasts like this you like to learn things one piece of advice that i will give and people i'll i'll tweet a prop and say bet this now and then get five people responding 20 minutes later dude it's gone what are you talking about it's not 18 and a half it's 22 and a half and i'll say i said this this is a you know for example, yesterday, Giannis ruled out, I bet Chris Middleton over 18 and a half points. Five minutes later, it was 22 and a half points. Got to grab it quick. Fast, fast, fast. That's I'm, I'm, you know, that's when you claim, I don't claim to be sharp. I claim to be opportunistic. You pay attention to that news. I love that. You, get it, you get it quick. So being quick is just as good as being sharp. Sometimes I guess would be be some advice for people. Uh, yeah, I actually am really happy that you said that because the amount of time, and that's such a good piece of advice because the amount of times that I've been like, oh, I'll brush my teeth and then I'll fix my hair and I'll grab some breakfast and then I'll bet my props. And I go back and look at the lines that I was scrolling through early in the morning and they're so much worse. And I'm like, why did I not just be on the ball and do it right away? It's yeah. So that is a really, really, I need to carry that with me. Cause oh my gosh, that screws me over so much. <laughs> Here you go. Guess what? You can go brush your teeth and you can go, uh, eat breakfast or whatever, but you just have alerts on for, uh, for DK live on Twitter. And then you see bzz, whoever's out, boom, you bet it. 
That's, a, that's my, that's my day-to-day life pretty much. So you got, so most of your, um, like notifications would be Twitter primarily. Yeah. So for people, cool. awesome. for people that want to do that, it's basically all, all sports. Like it'll, it'll just tweet out information, lineup, lineup related. Um, it won't all be, you know, relevant. Like you, we just tweeted out LaMarcus Aldridge retiring. Um, but when that NBA news and what, here's another thing people don't know. Uh, the NBA injury reports are generally like 1.30 Eastern and 5.30 Eastern. So there are times when you can expect this news. Some of it will come randomly, but if you're paying attention at those times, you have a better chance of getting the news. And then 90 minutes before tip-off of a game is when you're kind of going to get an injury report as well. So like those, whatever, a 7.30 game, if you're looking for news, 6 o'clock, there's a decent chance you're going you're gonna to see it. Right which is all about being patient. Like I have people that are like all throughout the day, starting at like sunrise. Like, what are the locks? What are the locks? What are the locks? I'm like, once I know the locks, you will know the locks. But for now I'm waiting it out so that we can either get the best value or we can see who's injured tonight. Cause that makes a huge difference. Cause like you said, star player goes out. Okay. Now it's time to look at those, you know, secondary stars because mm-hmm. they're going to have a big game. They almost have to, because now they're stepping into that leadership role on this team. So yeah, injuries are huge. And sometimes here's, you can have a good bet that you lose and people don't understand that. So like I, I mentioned the Middleton bet yesterday worked perfectly. A bad defense like the, like the Timberwolves blowout factor scared me. He had like 16 points at halftime and they were up 25. We'll talk about this in a second, but he racked up some quick points in the third quarter. Got it there for me. We won a week or two ago. Yeah, one of the first games Giannis was ruled out. I also bet Middleton over 18 and a half points closed again at like 21 and a half, 22 and a half. Great closing line value. He shot like four of 17 against the Kings who have an awful defense and it just didn't get there. And then people start tweeting you. I will take that bet 10 out of 10 times. You got value. You got a bad defense. You got a good shooter that didn't make shots. You just keep doing that. And they're going to win just like it won yesterday. Yep. So trust, trust the process, I guess, is yeah, the, the absolutely. there. Um, okay. So I guess we've, we've teased blowouts a couple of times. So I I do want to touch on this. There is nothing, there is nothing worse than losing a player prop in a blowout. I had one earlier this year. Again, I told you there's a million things I could put in that bad beat section. Here's one. I had a Tyler hero point prop. It was under by a half a point at halftime. I did not hit it. He played the, he played the entire third quarter. Missed all his shots against the 76ers. Didn't play the entire fourth quarter because it was a blowout. Partially because he missed all his shots in the third quarter, but still. So I got a little nervous about like the Middleton one. So the question here is, do you look at the, how do you factor in the point spread when you are betting a player prop? Do you ever find a prop that you like a lot based on the numbers, but shy away or bet it smaller because it's whatever, a 14 point spread? And this guy might only play three quarters all the time. The amount of props I love, the amount of props that I love. And I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. This is going to be a blowout game. Don't do it. But I will say as of lately, like beginning of the season, I would say my rule, my go-to was like nine points or, or higher for a spread, just be wary of a blowout. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. You know, at that nine, 10 range, we've seen it before eight and a half. We've seen, you know, teams like that cover Um, the nets are a good example of that. They covered an eight and a half point spread yesterday. So it can happen. However, over at the beginning of the season, if it was over nine, over 10, I was a little bit like, okay, I might not, I might just stay away from this one for now, especially with player props. But Mm -hmm. I will say lately, any game is a blowout game at this point. I mean, we're seeing teams getting blown out. Like, I don't think anyone expected the Celtics Nuggets game to happen the way that it did. I'm happy on your behalf that it did happen the way that it did. But that was one of the biggest swings of the season. It was crazy. And the Nuggets were on an eight game winning streak. They had just gotten Aaron Gordon and he was really like finding his rhythm on this team and really like, you know, stepping into his role. And MPJ was on fire at this time. So it was weird. And I don't think anyone expected, I think that was a game on that slate where you would argue, this is probably the best matchup of the night. And this is going to be a really, really fun game to watch. And then before you know it, it's a blowout. So 
at the beginning, you know, I kind of had a rule I followed in terms of like, if the spread is this number or higher, stay away from it. But now I feel like every game has the capability of being a blowout game at this point. Cause we're seeing it a lot. There was, I don't think it was last night, but I think it was the night before there was a blowout. I think every other game was a blowout game. Like it yeah. was brutal More than every other. It was like all of them. It I was, think there was brutal. We recently, like within the last 10 days had the day. How am I going to say this? The, the day with the largest margin of victory in NBA history. Like the games were decided by the most amount of points in NBA history. Like I think it was a Saturday ago or something like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of the April 12th slate. Uh, you had like 113 to 95 for the 76ers and the Mavs 120 to 97 for Spurs and magic. Uh, what was another one? I mean, like just, it was like every game, the slate, the spreads were not even close in terms of the underdogs covering for whatever reason, but yeah. So I think every game now is capable of it. And like we've talked about a million times on this podcast so far is the injuries are huge. So, you know, you've got to be very careful about those star players being out and um, that, that blowout factor. I think it's everywhere now, you know, before I had my little go-to things, but now I feel like it could happen no matter what. So I'm just cautious all around. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. Like I, there's a couple ways I look at it. Um, Number one, I try and do it like if it's if the spread is a blowout sometimes this year, it's because the one of the teams is extremely shorthanded. Uh, so on that shorthanded team, that means guys still have to play a lot regardless of which way it goes. So like there was a point in time where the Thunder had like eight guys uh, and they didn't have any point guards. Um, Gilgis Alexander was this was when he kind of first went out. He's obviously out long term now. Ty Jerome was out and they have Theo. I don't even know if it's mailed on mauled on. I don't even know how to say his last yeah, name. I don't know else. how to say his name either. But what I did know is that they didn't have any other guards, ball handling guards on the roster. So the thunder got absolutely mopped, but he still played 35 minutes for me and cashed his points, rebounds, assists. Um, it might've been against the Suns, I want to say. So Suns thunder with the thunder like have six guys out that's probably gonna be a blowout but i just trusted that he would be on the floor in the fourth quarter down 20 something and he was so you can try and play into the props towards blowouts if you want and try and maybe use it toward uh, into your favor yeah. um but at the same time like i i get scared to to bet a a star or whatever in a blowout and i just told you i bet middleton yesterday who was the bucks maybe best player uh, and it still worked out. So go figure. It's um, that's why it's that's why it's betting. I I've noticed that both of us on this podcast so far, everything in player when you're betting player props, it, it's just got to be like, mm, like well, well, I couldn't help it, you know. I mean, because that that's the thing. You got to just let it fly at some point. The handicapping can be all there. You've done the research. The numbers line up, and it literally could not look more perfect from a handicapping perspective. And it still won't hit. And that's just the nature of the beast. And that's something I had to learn very fast, which was be okay with losing because you're going to lose a lot. And that's mm -hmm. just how it goes. And so, yeah, I mean, the handicapping can be all there. You can stay up all night doing the research and finding the numbers and the stats and the trends. And at the end of the day, you're betting on another human being. They're not a robot. You know, you can't control them. So it is what it is. And you just got to be okay with it. And like you said, you know, I've had plenty of bets where, they put up the shots that I thought they were going to put up. They just oh, didn't yeah. make them. And so it's like, well, who would have thought, you know, they normally shoot 46 to 50% from the line, you know, or from the three, which is why I took their made threes prop like MPJ the other night, one for 12 from the three point line. How yes. was I supposed to know this man would not hit who would only hit one of 12. I had him two plus. He couldn't even make another one. So the thought process on him shooting that many threes was totally there, but oh, that's a, that's a great bet. If you've got him, if you've got him putting up 12 of those, that's a fantastic bet. You know, you would assume that he would make at least two or three of 12, but again, that's just where the handicapping's there and the player is not. So you just have to go with it. Yeah, it, it happens. And hopefully sometimes we get lucky the other way. Um, all right, we're going to get out of here. I put something out on Twitter for questions from you guys. If you had any coming on to 
uh, the show. So we'll flip through a few of those before we get out of here. So we have a couple of them. This one's from Don Brown. Love player props and parlays. Dangerous game. Um, Regardless of the... Oh, okay. Well, they admit it. Regardless of the stupidity of parlays. For NBA player props, what bet type has the most success or hit rate? Does points, rebounds, assists, or rebounds, assists wager give better returns due to the player being able to make up in one category versus just straight points, rebounds, or assists? That's an interesting and good question. Do you have any take on that? Yeah, I will say I love the player combos. I love those only because especially like I've noticed it in these like starting point guard positions. We have a lot of point guards that on any given night, you don't know if they're going to be in shooter mode or in facilitator mode. Like you really can't Ben Simmons is a great example. The amount of times that I bet that player combo on him and it helped me so much because I knew he's going to be hot in one or the other, he's going to get assists or he's going to shoot the ball that there's no in between. So I love the combos. I think there's value there. I kind of feel it's like a safety net a little bit where it gives you a little bit more wiggle room. Um, If you have seen, if you're, you know, if your trends are for this player, you're looking at their numbers in the last five, they're either hot in one or they're hot in the other. That's where those player combos can really save you and kind of um, act as a safety net in terms of like giving you a little bit of wiggle room. The value may not be as great just because you are getting that wiggle room, but I would say I, I love those combos. I don't know if you love them, but I, I think they're awesome. And they're definitely a safe bet. If you, if you're noticing that that's a habit of theirs in the, in the last five games. So I do love them, but my answer would be, it depends on the player. I want to play yeah. to that player's strength. And you essentially said that like Ben Simmons is a well-rounded guy. Ben Simmons is a guy that's going to get you a triple double with 12 points, 11 assists, 10 rebounds like yeah. that that said and that could be an under on his point prop still and yet he gets over the the three-way combo easily so russell westbrook you mentioned off the top that's a guy that you want combos on um you don't know you know there's a lot of games where he has six or seven assists and 18 rebounds or 18 assists and six or seven rebounds like he is a great example of a guy you want a combo on i'll go back to my one yesterday chris middleton is a scorer Uh, now I just looked, he actually had, uh, eight rebounds and seven assists. So he had a very well-rounded game with 27 points. Um, but I want to focus on him shooting. Like they have a guy like drew holiday that is going to kind of handle the ball and distribute a good physical point guard, um, which gets back to kind of the point guards again on the, on the combos. But I kind of want to go off of what type of player I'm, I'm betting on, um, for something like that. Oh, I agree. I, just to your point, when you brought up <clears throat> Russell Westbrook, that was my exact bet last night was points or not points rebounds plus assists. Right. Uh, Cause every once in a while, you know, you you'll see some games, he ends with 10 points. Some games he ends with 25. Uh, the points are where it gets a little streaky, but he is very consistent with rebounds and assists, which is mm-hmm. why that was the combo I went with last night. There you go. Um, all right. Another question here, which is more important for player props, uh, waiting to place bets to hear about injuries, ruling other players out or getting the bets in before the props are pulled or changed. I've been in bad situations on both sides lately. We kind of talked about this, but you can go ahead and, and reiterate it. I would say wait. Uh, cause that's what I do. But again, I, I have been on both sides of oh, dang it. I wish I wouldn't have waited. And then also, oh, I'm really glad I waited because, you know, the injury report just totally messed everything up for me. So, I mean, if I had to go off of what I think is best, I would say, wait. So I agree. And we've talked about this saying, be patient, be patient until you get the news you're waiting for. Then the patience is over now, now, now you want to know what you want to bet. You want to know we're talking about money. You want to know this is something I want to put two, three units on. And as soon as you get the news you're waiting for, you can be patient for six hours waiting for the news. As soon as you get it, you want to make that bet within 60 seconds. Like move quickly. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Know how much you want to bet, move quickly, bet it. There you are. You're good. Yes. Um, All right. Last one. Do you find NBA player performance is more consistent during the playoffs? Historically, 
feels like top tier players are going 110% every game when a series is tight. Regular season has minutes fluctuate or more inconsistencies. It seems like studs take more control in those playoff games. I would agree with that. Um, to an extent, I think it also depends on the player. Some players crumble when the pressure's on. <laughs> Let's get real. I mean, so it. I think it's definitely depends on the player. Um, but in terms of like, okay, let's look at the Lakers, for example. Players like Kyle Kuzma and Dennis Schroeder, once AD and LeBron are healthy and playing, I probably wouldn't bet anything on them because we know who the main characters of that team are going to be once playoff is in is in full swing. So I would say it's very circumstantial. That question really just depends on the circumstance. But I will say I think, you know, those those star players definitely are consistent in – terms of playing time and playing in general in the playoffs um their performance we'll just have to wait and see because this has been a weird year with lots of weird injuries so i think it's all just a waiting game (laughs) yes so here's my thoughts here players are going to play most likely their heavier minutes in the postseason the defense is also going to tighten up teams try um they're not always trying in the regular season so it can go both ways what you, I, I prefer betting the regular season because I want the mess um, of uncertainty. So a guy gets ruled out, like whatever, Paul George rested last night. Guys aren't going to be resting playoff games. Like there are no unexpected scratches. So that's how I like betting because I, like I said, I'll be opportunistic. I'll take advantage of this news when it comes out. So for betting the playoffs in a player prop, it's one of those spots where you have to be really confident in the matchup and in that player's role, because it strictly comes down to those things. There, there are no injuries that are really going to give you an edge in the postseason. Agreed. Um, all right. That's pretty much all we have. Hopefully this helps people make some, some money in the player prop NBA market. Um, I guess before we get out of here, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. You don't have to give anything here, but does anything jump out to you? on this Thursday, April 15th slate? Yeah, you know, again, like I like we've talked about a million times, I tend to wait, um, just especially when I... This is... Yeah, okay, let me rephrase that. Don't give a play. Is there anything you have your eye on that maybe later will will open up for us? Okay, yeah. I mean, I I really like to look at, um, like I said, defense. So already I'm kind of being drawn towards the Celtics versus the Lakers because I know that the Celtics have been pretty pretty hot with their defense lately and, and offense as well. And the Lakers, they're a good defensive team when they're healthy is my thought there. And they're not healthy right now. So I might look to some Celtics props today because um, I think the Lakers aren't as strong defensively right now as they would be if they were healthy. So I think there's some opportunities there for the Celtics to really have a good game. Um, We may see quite a few three balls in that game. So I might cook up a made threes prop. I've been really loving those. And uh, Jalen Brown has been awesome to bet on uh, as well as, of course, Jason Tatum. But really, really loving Jalen Brown lately. But I did make a lot of money on Marcus Smart the other day. So I am also big Marcus Smart girl right now because he made me money. I had a juice play on him for made threes at plus 130. He cashed it for me. Um. So yeah, I'm hot on the Celtics with you tonight. I I mean, I like, I just like their players right now. Their starting lineup is, is solid and they're playing really good basketball right now. So I'll probably focus on that matchup. They've maybe turned a little bit of a corner here this season after some pretty poor play, uh, six and one in their last seven. So yeah, that's, I mean, and to our point, all, all podcast, what time is it right now? It is almost noon on the east coast right now dk sportsbook is telling you demanding that you wait to bet these props because there are two players in warriors Cavs available and then one two three six players in lakers celtics available none of the other games are even available yet because we need we need injury news so i mean the the sportsbook is making the decision for you i guess in this case that you got to wait before you bet these things yeah yeah so i'm excited i think the celtics They've been really fun to bet on, especially from a player prop perspective. So um, I, that's going to be my matchup that I really focus on tonight. There we go. All right. Um, 
I'm rooting for your uh, team. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Um, all right, so she is Liv Moods. You can follow her on Twitter, at Liv Moods, the director of media in at Post for Book at HQ. Um, follow her on Twitter. You will see player props. Um, she presents them much better than me with a TikTok. I just tweet <laughs> them in boring fashion, and you can, you can read it. Uh, but nonetheless, we will both have you both have you covered for NBA player props. Liv, thank you so much for joining Unreasonable Odds. Thank you so much for having me.